Hi, my name's Lee Kirkpatrick and I'm an incident lead with the Sophos Rapid Response Team. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing some of the typical RDP queries that we use during our investigations. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth about all of these queries and exactly what they do. In a later video, we'll actually be showcasing these, how you can run them in Sophos Central and what the output may look like for you. But what we will be doing is just running through some of the typical queries that we utilize to get you back up to speed with what you should be looking for with regards to RDP. Now, the first query that we typically run is the 21 to 40 local session logon events. This actually queries for the typical IDs that we're looking for in the terminal services local session manager operational event log to show connections, disconnects, reconnections, all of those sorts of things. We also subsequently use the 1149 RDP logons query, which looks in the terminal services remote connection manager operational, specifically for the event ID 1149, as the name suggests, in order to pull out those successful RDP connections. Now, you may think it's a little bit redundant to query both of these event logs, but there's a reason for that. And that may be that the attacker has cleared one of the event logs, but not the other. It may be that there was an error in actually logging that event for whatever reason, and one event log has it and the other doesn't. So always good to use as many sources as possible when you're trying to look for things like RDP lateral movement. Another really useful query, and we've discussed about the dangers of exposing RDP to the internet in previous videos, is a query called RDP logins from external IPs. And the name is pretty obvious as to what that query does. It looks for R uh, RDP connections from external IP addresses. Now, this query actually looks in both of the previous aforementioned event logs. And as I say, something you should definitely run throughout your environment in order to identify if there's potentially any RDP logins occurring from external IP addresses. Now, another query that I think quite commonly gets overlooked with regards to RDP is the 4624 4625 login events query. Now, this is actually looking in the security event log for 4624 event IDs, which would be a successful logon or a 4625, which would be a failed logon. Now, typically when we're looking for these events, it's normally because we're looking for network-based logons, and that's absolutely fine, you should be, and that would be a logon of type three. So with each of these events, there's a logon type, and that kind of indicates what that logon is. So a logon type three would be a network-based logon, and a logon type 10 would be an RDP logon, for example. Now, the reason that we query for this when we're actually looking for possible RDP lateral movement is because it can help us identify failed logins when network level authentication is enabled. So with RDP, if you fail to log on and network level authentication or NLA is enabled, you will see a 4625, so a failed logon, with a logon type three. Now that may be a little bit confusing because you would think that's a network-based logon, and it is, but typically they're associated with something like SMB, for example. So why are we seeing that here? And that's because of network level authentication being enabled with RDP. It authenticates over the network prior to establishing the RDP session. So it's just as important to look for those failed logon events as it is those successful logon events as well. Now, what you can also do with Sophos is you don't just have to use it in order to try and identify lateral movement with RDP. You can also use it to identify misconfigurations within your environment. So a lot of the times when we go into environments for an investigation, we look for things that are misconfigured. And one of those being, especially with RDP, network level authentication being disabled. Now, the reason that's enabled by default is because it adds additional layers of security. So disabling that is not a good idea. And what we've done in this presentation is create a really quick query that queries the registry and looks for a specific key having a certain value that would indicate that NLA has been disabled. So not only can you use Sophos to identify RDP lateral movement, you can also use it to proactively find misconfigurations within your environment and make sure that you fix those prior to an incident actually occurring. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this video has helped you better understand what queries you can use in order to better identify lateral movement using RDP and hopefully given you a nice little tip on how you can better identify possible misconfigurations. Thank you very much for your time and catch you on the next video.